Well, my friends, this is the final week of January. So let me ask you, how is your New Year's resolution coming along? <laughs> According to a recent study in Psychology Today, about 50% of Americans make a New Year's resolution, and only about 20% of those actually stick. The most popular resolutions seem to focus on some specific behavioral change. This is the year that I quit smoking, for example, or this is the year that I finally make use of my gym membership, which is my perennial resolution. We've all been there, haven't we? We begin the year full of resolve, but before we know it, life gets in the way and we're back where we started only now with a little more guilt or disappointment. We human beings, in all of our complicated beauty, find that change is hard to do, that true transformation is a slow process with many setbacks. And when we don't see results right away, it's easy to just give up. Today's reading from the Gospel of Matthew tells the story of a transformation, but only the first part of the story. We're still at the very beginning of Mark's account of Jesus' life, and most of the real action is yet to come. Here we find Jesus in Galilee, just after John's arrest, but before the silver platter, walking along the seashore, proclaiming the good news. Jesus knows who he is. When he was baptized in the River Jordan, a voice came from heaven saying, You are my son, the beloved. But at least in Mark's gospel, it doesn't seem like anyone else heard that. Jesus was then driven into the wilderness where he was tempted and tested by the devil for 40 days. He reappears in Galilee, this poor and oppressed region of the Roman Empire, ready to proclaim that the kingdom of God has drawn near. Jesus' ministry has begun. Meanwhile, four men are going about their work, fishing off the seashore, making their living. First, Simon, who's later called Peter, and his brother Andrew are throwing their nets into the water as Jesus approaches them. He doesn't say much. He doesn't perform a miracle, but he does make them a promise. These strangers, these busy working men, follow me, Jesus says, and I will make you fish for people. They leave their nets in the sand, and they follow him. Next, Jesus comes to James and John, working in their boat with their father. He calls to them, only we don't know what he says this time. They leave their nets and their father, and they follow him. This passage is one of the most inspiring and perhaps most troubling scenes in the entire Gospel of Mark. Inspiring because of Mark's repetition of that adverb immediately, describing the way that both sets of brothers respond to Jesus' call, without hesitation, without question, without even deliberation. But why troubling, you might wonder? Well, troubling because I can't help but wonder how I would react in the same situation. If I was working on a normal day, going about my normal tasks, and some stranger, some guy who literally just wandered out of the desert, asked me to drop everything and follow him, what would I do? Actually, I don't have to wonder. I know the answer. I would turn around back to work. <laughs> so what's going on here? What happened in that moment that allowed those four men to make the ultimate commitment of their lives in a single moment and follow this complete stranger into the unknown? Well, I'm normally a huge fan of the new revised standard version of the Bible. And I know how incredibly geeky that sounds. But while I'm normally a huge fan of that version, the version that we use in Episcopal worship, the version that you just heard right now, this particular text loses some of its magic in translation. Follow me and I will make you fish for people, it says. Or 
or some of you may be more familiar with, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. But a more direct or literal translation would read, come follow me and I will make you become fishers of people. Become. The very verse hangs, I think, on that one word, become. I will make you fish doesn't sound like the best way to invite a person to completely change his life. It sounds more like another task, like more work to do. And these guys are already pretty busy. But becoming fishers of people alludes to a fuller call, an actual transformation, a conversion, a whole new life. Jesus invites James, John, Simon, Peter, and Andrew to follow him and become something new. And Jesus is inviting us to do the same. I think that one of the problems with New Year's resolutions is that they don't have a realistic enough scope. We want to affect change in our lives, but at least in my experience, we want that change to be realized sooner rather than later. Or, as is usually the case with me, we want the change now. A real commitment, a transformation of being, has two faces. The choice that is made in the moment and the effects of that choice as it plays out over the course of our entire lives. Real transformation happens when both sides, the commitment and the daily recommitment, coexist. The four fishermen who became disciples decided at that moment to accept an invitation to change their lives. They were bold and they were active. They didn't passively receive Jesus' call, but they left everything that they had and they actually followed him. Nothing was the same for them after that, but it was just the first step. Remember, this is still the first chapter of the gospel. It's just the beginning of the story. In the next 15 chapters, that same commitment to Christ is made real in the lived experience of these men and those who join them on this incredible journey. And it's not an easy journey. Soon enough, Simon Peter will be rebuked by Jesus, the only time that happens in the Bible. Then he'll want to build Jesus a dwelling place on the Mount of Transfiguration, so we can keep him there, so nothing bad ever happens. Later, he denies Jesus in a moment of total, consuming human fear. And at the very end, Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and John, these men who left their nets to follow Jesus, are nowhere to be found at the foot of the cross. Even then, they were still figuring things out. Even then, they were making mistakes and getting it wrong. Like all of us disciples, the commitment they made in a moment takes a lifetime to realize. The fishermen in today's story show us what commitment in Jesus really looks like. They show us what discipleship really looks like. Simon, Peter, Andrew, James, and John decide to follow Jesus, and then that decision unfolds and presents to us a microcosm of the life of faith. They listen to Jesus teach, and they're astounded by what they hear. They witness incredible things done in his name. They lose track of him and then find him again. They run away. They seek solace in their community. It sounds familiar, doesn't it? It sounds like us. A moment and a lifetime. Fishing nets and crosses. In our culture, where TV ads promise lasting weight loss with pills, or where celebrities have $10 million weddings only to divorce a couple of months later, Kim Kardashian, <laughs> Choosing to make a lasting commitment to something, anything, may feel like swimming upstream. Well, the decisiveness of those fishermen in Galilee may intimidate us. Remember, 
This is only the first chapter. The rest of the story lasts a lifetime. 